I want to say to everybody listening right now that uh, you're good to me. Uh, you call me a couple times a year looking for racetracks, dirt tracks for your son. You're you're calculated, and and I know this about you. <laughs> so I just wanted to preface this so you don't think I'm attacking you. The racer in me uh, just looks at your teammate Austin Dillon, and they're they're changing crew chiefs around. Uh, and they're trying to get your cars faster. So it's no secret right now that RCR's cars are off a little bit. You're a racer is what I'm trying to say. What area do you think that needs to be worked on in your cup cars at RCR to, to get a little more speed? I mean, that's that's a great question. We talk about that every week. The short track stuff has definitely been our struggle and we, everybody nowadays relies so much on simulation and all that sort of stuff. But um, the sim stuff has kind of thrown us the wrong way and, and has led us to down the wrong paths a couple of times. Like we tried, um, uh, we went to the simulator for Richmond last year for the spring and we built a setup based around what was fast on, on, on the sim and we ran it and we ran 20th. I think we finished 18th or something in the spring race. And then we went back there in the fall and we literally just copied. Thankfully, we have our key partners with Chevy, with Team Chevy and the Hendrick guys. And we just copied the Hendrick guys setups from when we went back there in the fall and we ran third. I ran third. Austin ran eighth, I think. And we took those same exact setups from last fall and ran them again this time because we're like, surely if we're going to be any any worse, we're going to run 10th. You know what I mean? But if we're still going to if they're still going to be what they were, then we're going to run top five. And uh, we ran 20th, like we were not even in the ballpark. So it's crazy that that stuff like that happens. Like <clears throat> what's tried and true, don't screw it up, dummy, just run it again. And lo and behold, it doesn't work. So you always got to be on the forefront of new ideas and fresh ideas, and you just got to be smarter and better. So I think some of it is setup stuff. Yes. Um, I think some of it is car build, uh, you know, just having the splitter in the right position, having the floor in the right position, the body in the right position, like all that sort of stuff and being able to get everything right uh, with that. And, you know, what's next on the forefront of, you know, little chassis tweaks that you can do and where do you put this washer and that spacer for your Ackerman or for, you know, your bump steer or do you bump steer the rear, all that sort of like, there's just so many things now that, um, that you have at your, dis well, you have at your disposal, but everybody has the same stuff. So, um, it's really, really hard to find that advantage. Yeah, I understand. I, uh, I was at Bristol and I was looking at the cars and I thought to myself, my Lord, uh, yeah. you know, it, 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 and you're right as the same as they all are, there's a lot of adjustments and, um, uh, I, I get it. And I the littlest of things can make you a hero or make you a zero. I mean, it is so small. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is. It is unbelievable. Uh, I get it. I totally get it. Uh, because I, I build my own race cars and we're, we're, you and I are the same.